There are two main objectives to this first module. To describe scientific literacy in psychology, to describe the scientific method and basic research ethics that psychologists use. Let's start with scientific literacy. Throughout this project, we will be moving through the five components for becoming scientifically literate with psychological research. First, to read and evaluate media reports. Every day you hear and read stories about recent psychological research. Don't you sometimes wonder what of these stories you should believe? Find original research reports. Sometimes the best way to evaluate and critique what you're hearing and or reading in the media is to find the original research. Once you have learned to find the original research reports, you need to read and understand the original research reports. The original research has a very clear structure and framework. As you become more familiar with that framework, you will have an easier time reading and understanding the research. But you also need to critique the original research reports. This is often a stumbling block for many students, but it is perhaps one of the most important. Remember that last course objective? Recognize that psychological explanations vary across populations and contexts? Well, this is something that you will become proficient in as you learn to critique the original research reports. Finally, you need to write scientifically to communicate your findings. After you've done all the previous work, you want to be able to communicate what you have discovered and how you have reached your conclusions. You need to do this within the structure of scientific writing so that others will be able to recognize that this is not your personal view or opinion, but the results from a scientific literate view of the research. By completing these modules, you will learn to engage in each component of scientific literacy in psychological research. In each subsequent module this semester, we will return to this graphic so that you can track your progress through these five components. Now let's look at how this knowledge and skills benefit you as a scientifically literate person by looking at a specific example. By being able to evaluate a secondary report of research, you will know when that report is credible. Further, learning to track down the original research will enable you to gather additional information. So if you hear a story that people can learn better when they have sufficient sleep, you can ask yourself whether this secondary report is credible. You could find the original research to find out details and determine whether the report was valid and whether that research would apply to you. Here is a media report on that very topic, Learning Best When You Rest. This was found on the web at Psych Central. According to the secondary report, sleeping just after learning new material is beneficial. As you can see on this screenshot of the report from my computer, the post identifies the original researcher, Jessica Payne of Notre Dame University. Here's another screenshot from this post, and now you can see that at the end of the post, there is additional information given, including the title of the original article, Memory for Semantically Related and Unrelated Declarative Information the benefit of sleep, the cost of wake, and the journal in which it was published, PLOS 1. Now the original research by Payne describes the entire study. By the way, today the original research title and report might be a little intimidating, but trust me, by the time you finish Chapter 6, it will make sense. Here is a screenshot of the original research report. Although you can't read this from my screenshot, I can tell you that the original research was conducted with a sample of college students. Therefore, I can conclude that this research is likely applicable to traditional aged college students, but psychologists do not know if it would help an older adult experiencing memory loss. 
at least based on this research study alone. This is where the researchers may revise their original question and begin the scientific method anew. Most of the original work you will be doing while reviewing this first media report was covered in Chapter 1 of your textbook. You might want to return to that chapter to review the steps for the scientific method and research ethics. Remember, the scientific method involves these five steps, and once the researcher has reported, revised, and replicated their study, they may find that they perceive a new or revised question, and the process begins anew. The other thing that I want you to think about is in terms of psychological research, ethics. Your textbook outlined guidelines for ethics in psychological research in terms of research for, with humans and animals. Remember, the institutional review boards serve as the monitors for all research. Any researcher must first to see, receive approval from an appropriate IRB before they begin their research. That group will consider the research proposal and decide if the procedures are proper and ethical. In addition, most researchers are required to obtain informed consent from their participants. This form outlines the procedures and gives the participant the right to refuse to participate and to stop their participation at any time. Experiments that require some type of deception upon approval from the IRB will also require that participants are debriefed. In other words, that they are explained the true purpose of the study at the conclusion of their participation. Now your first assignment. I want you to read a media report of psychological research. You can locate this article online. Read it carefully and then refer to your textbook and back to the article in completing the worksheet Analyzing Media Reports of Psychological Research. Finally, this assignment is worth 10 points and I have provided you with a simple rubric for scoring your submission.